Hello there, I'm RhinoGT4, and welcome to Let's Play Toka Championship Racing for PlayStation. This game initially released in 1997 in November in Europe. Us America Trash didn't get this game until August 1998. Because, I don't know. Because. Um, this game was developed by Codemasters, released here in North America by 3DO. But not the uh, not the console 3DO, a different company, I think maybe I don't know. But uh, yeah, also this happens to be official game of the 1997 uh, British Touring Car Championship, which is neat. And it's the first game, of course, in the illustrious Toka slash Race Driver series slash Grid Grid. So yeah, doing another first game in the series because I'm smart. But uh. Anyways, so yeah, thought I'd play through this game instead of going straight back to NASCAR 2005 after finishing WRC2. And uh, we're gonna have us a grand old time with this, I hope. I don't know. It's been a while since I last played this game, so... Ew. As always, I'm streaming this LP live on Twitch, so if you want to join the live recording sessions, well, go to my fucking Twitch channel and watch your streams live. Dummy. But, um, yeah. Uh, main menu here, pretty simple. We have start race, game options, high scores, memory card. Of course, we can load data, check out our hype scores, check out the options. So let's check out the options. So we have sound setup. We can change volumes of stuff. Music, I'm going to leave off. I don't know if the music in this game is copyrighted, but uh, I'm just going to just gonna play it safe here. Because fuck it. When we choose our graphic setups, we can have choose which way we want a uh, two-player split screen to be split. We can... Uh, enable widescreen mode, which really isn't widescreen, it's more like a, a wider FOV. Or something like that, I don't really know how this shit works. So I'm just gonna keep it off, because 4x3, fuck it. Uh, position the screen, so move it around the screen. And stuff. And we have our controller setup, which we can change our controls. Since I'm playing this on the PS3, thanks to backwards compatibility, I'm just using a DualShock 3 controller. Uh, we can configure our buttons, so let's see, hang on. I need to, speaking of PS3, hello, that is the wrong thing. Controller settings, I need to change my controller to analog mode, which I failed to do because I'm smart. There we go, alright, anyways. Analog controller, analog acceleration, yes. Analog braking, yes. Choose button for gear up, I'll make that R1. Gear down L1, rear camera. Um, sure, you can be L2. Change camera, triangle, horn, because there's a horn in this game. I'll make that R2. Why not? And there we go. And then we can change our steering sensitivity, or just our sensitivity for the analog control. I'm going to keep them on medium, because I really don't know how the... Uh, sensitivity is going to be. Also, yeah, fully mappable controls in a PlayStation 1 game from 19... well, technically 1997, even though this version is from 98, but yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> we can also change vibration settings to on and off, and whatever, I'll leave it on, I don't care. Then we can select our language from English and Espanol. I guess because North America market, so, you know, English and Spanish for Mexicans. If you're a French-Canadian, fuck you, no French option. Haha. Ha. But yeah. So let's go to the meat of the game, start race mode. So we have three modes here. Single race, which we can just pick a car, track, and do a single race. We have the championship mode, thank you for the bits, Harry. We have the championship mode, which is what we're going to be doing, you know, taking place in the Auto Trader RAC Championship Race, or the uh, Auto Trader RAC British Touring Car Championship. And we have time trial mode, which is just practice, you know, you're on the track by yourself, vroom. So uh, we're going to do the championship mode. So we have options to load a saved game or new game, or start with a new game. We have a short championship or a full championship option. Basically this changes the length of the races, so short championship, it's the same amount of races, but the race lengths are shorter. And full championship has the full length race, I believe, of the... Uh, actual 97 BTCC. So yeah. And then we have our difficulty level. We can choose between standard and expert because I'm a hardcore idiot. I like, I'm like. i going to go with expert. And let's continue. 
So now we can enter our name. Let's just go with standard Rhino. I forget how names go in this. I I, uh, I probably should have checked that beforehand, but fuck it. And now we could choose our car. So we could have a few choices here between the Honda Accord, the Audi A4, Vauxhall Vectra, nice the Volvo S40, the Ford Mondeo, the Nissan Primera, the Peugeot 406, and the Renault Laguna. So uh see all these stats of the cars, you know, whether front wheel drive, all wheel drive like the Audi. How many valves they have in their freaking engine, the horsepower ratings and stuff. I'm going to choose the Peugeot for this uh, LP. Why? I don't know. It's just cool. Don't really ever hear about the Peugeot 406, so yeah. There's that. But uh, yeah, anyways, press up. You can change between automatic and manual transmission. Of course, I'm going to go with manual transmission because I'm a hardcore retard. And let's go. Let's load up our first area. Do 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 do, and begin our championship, our wonderful BTCC championship, which may or may not feature as many punts as real BTCC. But anyways, it's time for our first round. At the Donington Park, here's our loading screen. We get a track map, get track information, the race length, race distance, 45 miles, and the lap record, which is welcome 10 to the down. start of the 1997 touring car season. With several newcomers this season, the championship may be wide open. Donington Park is our first venue for the opening rounds of the touring car season. Qualifying for the first race is due to start, so let's see who comes out on top. And there was the voice of Tiff Nadell, because he did voice things for this game, narration. So here we go, so to start off each round of the championship, we get thrown into a qualifying session, and I've already binned it, good, fantastic. Some tells me that's going to happen to me a lot in this game, just because of the way this game's physics are. But um, I'll get to that in a moment. So yeah, you get a three lap qualifying session to s determine where you're going to start on the grid. So if I do well here. I've never been particularly good at Donington. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is... Oh boy. I see uh, we're off to a banging start here. Alrighty then. Well, since I'm here, I might as well cycle through the camera. So we have the close chase, we have the far chase camera, we have a bonnet cam, and an in-car camera. Again. 1997. Hey. And then those are our camera options. I'm going to stick with the close chase camera. Um, I might use the in-car cam for the second race, because, as uh, you may have noticed, like on the uh, well. The, during uh, Tiff's uh, little, uh, whatever the hell he was saying previewing the event. Um, BTCC does a two race format basically so we're actually doing two races here at Donington as opposed to just one. So uh, for the first race I'll use this chase camera and for the second race uh, I will swap to the in-car camera. Also yes cam front will drive the mega oversteer. That's, um, that's a thing with this game. Um, it is, while this game is pretty cool, the physics are extremely questionable in the fact that it's extremely, extremely easy to spin your car at high speed. Like, oversteer is pretty much a feature of the game, in all honesty. Yeah, something like that, although admittedly I kind of took that corner a little too quickly. So yeah, you don't want to steer the car too hard. That's one main reason why I went with um, analog controls. Um, so I can maybe like adjust my steering a little bit. And not have to steer so violently and hopefully maybe have a smaller chance of that happening. But so far, uh, not so good. So far, I'm a giant failure. I'm hoping that I don't have to um, re-record any of these segments. I got lucky with WRC2 in the Extreme Championship, where the only time I had to reset something was like two stages into the New Zealand Rally, just because of how awful that was going. So I can see this is probably going to be another pretty hard uh, 
LP, to be honest, because the physics of the game and also the fact I'm playing on Expert, so yeah. And also, this is the only time I'm going to be showing like, full qualifying, just to show it off. Because, 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 because... I see we're talking about game collections in chat. Pardon me if I'm not paying attention. You don't really need to explain the HUD of the game. You see it. You see what's going on here. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's simple. Inch stuff. So there we go. Completing our second lap at minute 48, which is very slow for Donington. Oh, hi. Other cars. Yeah, this is like a opening open qualifying session, so there's actually other cars on the track, although that guy was going extremely slow. It's probably on an outlap or something. I don't know. Hey, I didn't spin it around the first turn. We're already making progress. Now if I can just uh, not do that around the old hairpin. God damn it. Is pit lane accessible in this game? Yes, it is. You can, in fact, go in the pit lane. Now, I don't know if, like, pit stops pit stops are a thing in this game. I don't think they are. But you can drive through the pit lane. And it'll actually, like, automatically drive you through the pit lane at pit lane speed. Which is neat. There's actually a little cheeky thing you can do here at Donington. Um, because of where the entrance of the pit lane is, if you actually enter the pit lane at the end of your qualifying lap, you'll actually get a faster lap time than if you just went around the final hairpin. I saw that in a TAS. Because, yeah, someone tasked this game, I think as a joke, but they, they went through with it. So I do not need second gear through this chicane, son of a bitch. So, yeah. The, the high-speed corners are definitely going to be something that I'm going to clench my asshole at at every, every freaking time. Because of the, uh, the very... Yeah. Yeah, you've, you've seen it. Yay, a qualification over. Now, when are you going to speak to? With only hundreds of a second separating the first few drivers, we should have a cracker of a race on our hands. So yeah, um, pole time, Alan Minyu with a 128.11. And I ran a 1... Where, where am I? Oh, I'm in 11th. I'm starting 11th. Okay, with a 146.8. Apparently my Peugeot teammate qualified last. A 209.6. Well then. Well, it's time to go down to the track where the cars are ready to start the first race. So here we go. Time to begin the race with the grid starts. And away we go. And I actually had to shift out of neutral, damn it. So you saw I had a points requirement there. Of uh, I have to score at least 20 points here in both races across the two races here at Donington and actually, in order to actually have the game allow me to go to the next race. Holy crap, everyone piling into turn one. I somehow made it through and also gained a bunch of positions. Up to sixth place. I will undoubtedly lose all of this in the, once we get into the old hairpin. Like, there's no way it's not going to happen. Okay, I didn't spin it. Hooray! I'm one for four at the old hairpin. All right. Hell yeah. Oh jeez, oh god, oh man. There's cars all around. I'm still making my way through the pack, going through the Renaults, which the Renaults are by far the strongest cars in this game as far as the AI drivers. And, uh... Alright, we're into P1. Just like that. Well then. I'm actually very uh, surprised here. Okay. <laughs> Well then. Oh, trying to downshift with L2. That's not correct. That is not correct at all. And we go and bye bye. So, um, that's a quirk about this game, actually. Um, at the beginning of the championship, the f like, the, the game, the championship basically kind of, in terms of AI skill, they tend to get better as the championship progresses. <laughs> So you actually start off, like, it starts off pretty damn easy here at Donington, and then as the championship progresses, it's fucking, uh... 
it, it gets a lot harder to win races towards the end. So that's going to be fun to deal with. Holy shit. Also, yes, Tom. I'm playing on Babby difficulty. Except I'm not. Also, fuck you, Tom. <laughs> Oh no, there we go, fucked it. Alright, still one for five with the old hairpin. Son of a bitch. Well. Although I have pulled out a massive lead already. Oh, there, I see, I see a little bit of a Reno. I see a couple pixels of the Reno right behind me, alrighty. At least the first races are easy, so I can, like, maybe get used to the controls and maybe learn how to not spin this fucking Peugeot at every opportunity. Just kidding, I will spin it at all times, because I suck. The heck is a pixel? No. Just no. So yeah, this is... it's Toka. It's cool. This is a game I've actually never, like, done a full cha completed a full championship of, but I think I made it to, like, the last, like, four rounds and then just gave up. Because I was kind of in a position where I had to, like, win both races, and I just couldn't. I, I just couldn't. Hopefully, I won't have that trouble in this LP, even though I absolutely will. But one can hope, damn it. Also, I need to actually pay attention to my revs and actually shift my damn car. Would be a good idea. Yeah, best lap of 145. Still about 20 seconds off the pole time. So there's that. Gotta be so careful. I basically just I, I stay off the throttle completely. <laughs> That seems to be the way to go, at least when going around the old hairpin. That is for sure. So I just gotta keep that in mind. Anyways, yeah, the Peugeot 406, it's a pretty neat car. Yeah, you don't really see it in many games, like... The only, like, non-licensed racing game I've seen this car in is probably Gran Turismo 2. I think there was a 406 in GT2, if I remember correctly. Toyota LM 2018 colorized. Yes, clearly. My name is actually Fernando Alonso. So one thing I haven't... I don't think I've been able to show off yet is the, uh, the... the, the Split time gap thing. Oh, hey, fastest lap. A 32 7. There we go. That's what happens when you drive semi competently. You're still, you know, five seconds slower than Menu's pole, time, pole lap. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, qualifying, they, they kind of are very quick in qualifying no matter what. Good luck scoring a single pole in this game. You won't. Hairpin, just staying off the throttle. Speed lost by just staying off the throttle is still better than spinning the car. So fuck it. And it's really only turn one in the old hairpin where I'm actually struggling here. Like the rest of the track, I'm actually the car is actually behaving well enough, which is nice. Vroom, vroom. When Toyota doesn't have battery problems. So just locking the shit out of the brakes heading into the chicane because I don't care. Also, what the hell was that? What kind of line was that? I don't know. That was a bad line, that's for sure. I don't think there's any, like, tire degradation or fuel consumption in this game, so it really does not matter if I just, you know completely flatten my tires in these braking zones. Like at all. 
tell you. Anyways, four laps complete here at Donang Tan. And we're going for another spin rooney. That's like what, five now? Is the corner designer free from his torture? No. I think I still have that sound for like small bit uh, things. Is this really Toka? No, this is a uh, NASCAR 98. Haha. -ha. Hilarious joke. God damn it. I spun it at both T1 and the old hairpin. Heck. Oh man, test drive, that sucks. <laughs> Hopefully things get better very quickly. It's okay, test drive. Just fucking take your computer to McDonald's, use their Wi-Fi to make Let's Plays. Record at McDonald's. Very wide line around the hairpin, don't care. Looks a lot worse than I remember. I mean, it is a PlayStation game. I mean, unless you played the game on PC, it definitely will look a lot worse, because, you know, this game looks a lot better on PC for obvious reasons. Oh, Jesus. This game is beautiful. Shut up, Tom. No one asked you. I think this looks good, considering this is a fucking, you know, 1997 PlayStation game. Like, this is good graphics for that time. Plus, it even has an in-car view, which... Granted, the in-car view looks pretty much the same for every single car. Oh, hi, back markers. Oh, hi, teammate. How you- oh god, how you guys doing? What's up? You guys sure are just kind of crawling around here. Crawling in my skin. Is there a damage system in this game? Um, I don't think mechanical damage is a thing. I, I, I Honestly, I probably should have did more research before starting recording this, but whatever. Um, there's visual damage in this game, but I don't know any... I don't think there's mechanical damage. Oh god! Hi, how you doing? I was not expecting him to still be on my inside entering that hairpin. Go. So yeah, there's some slight visual damage. I, uh, I cracked the windows on the right side of my car. Oops. Go me. I think I, I, think I pulled a Jimmer there. Crashing while trying to uh, overtake back markers. Sorry, Jimmer, love you. Aye. So don't stab the throttle when trying to go around the turn. It, uh, makes for some sad. Hi, how you doing? What's up? One of the uh, Ford drivers. And my back windscreen's now uh, cracked. Dang. I like how they were going like 60 miles per hour a moment ago, and now, like. Now I got this Monday all up on my ass. He's gone. All right. This is, it's just that section of the track where they crawl. Good to know. Oh, God, don't break in the grass. Grass is bad. I somehow got away with it, though. No idea how. And 
what car is this? I can't tell. I can't tell from the pixels. I still can't tell. I'm actually not sure what car that is. I think that might be one of the Hondas. Something like that. Nice and smooth. Oh, it was Vauxhall? Okay. I don't remember, like, some of the car to livery things. I, I, I kind of forget which cars have which liveries, for the most part. Except the Peugeot, obviously, and also the Renaults. Anyways, Donington's always been one of those tracks to me where, like, it's a cool track, but I cannot drive it for the life of me. Like, it's not exclusive to this game. Like, I always struggle at the old hairpin no matter what game I play. So... <laughs> part of my struggles here is due in part to the physics of this game. The other part is just the fact that I suck at Donington. I royally suck at Donington. Ooh, that's a neat test drive. Hell yes, smart car. I think other than that 32, I don't think I've had a single lap where I haven't, like, gone off track or spun the car. In the eight laps I've done so far. Hooray. It's 18 laps, Tom. I know it's hard to tell because, yeah. <laughs> no, don't die. Okay, didn't die. Managed to counter steer it. Again, just staying off the throttle. So I can counter steer it, I guess. Have you ever seen such an oversteery front-wheel drive car? Well, play this game, you'll see a lot of oversteery front-wheel drive cars, and even an oversteery all-wheel drive car in the Audi. That thing also oversteers like a motherfucker. In this game. All the nose. Every time I start streaming, nose decides to itch like a... lot. My oversteer is best oversteer. Because, Toka. So, uh, I guess... One thing we can talk about here is the weird naming conventions of these pet old Toka games. Because, I don't know why Codemasters, uh... What Codemasters thought when they, like, named these first three Toka games, but, like, hey, let's name these slightly different for... Europe versus North America. So, while in North America here, it's called Toka Championship Racing, which kind of sounds silly in itself. You know, in Europe, this game is called Toka Touring Car Championship. It... I, I don't understand why it has to be different name like this. Cody's, please. isn't even your dumbest region exclusive or yeah region name change we might get to that at some point cuz holy shit talking make nose itchy it definitely is for me oh boy reaching another pack of back markers into the chicane including one of the Audis There's a gaggle, a bit of a gaggle. It's gonna be interesting to see my margin of victory in this race, because I'm fucking gone despite my millions of mistakes. 
What difficulty is this? Expert. They have the choice between normal and expert. I chose expert. It's just that the first rounds are always extremely easy in this game. Then they ditch token name, change it to pro race driver for a while. After a while, uh, only the first token race driver was called like didn't have the token name here in North America at least. It was still called token race driver. Er well, I say everywhere else. It's a pff. the names of the games in this series is just a massive fucking mess. That's all I really have to say about it. Oh, and there goes... I think that was the other Ford around at the old hairpin. So I'm not the only one who sucks at the old hairpin. Oh, shit. But anyways, eventually they did drop the token name and the race driver name. Or drop the token name and change the name of the series to Grid. <laughs> kind of like how they changed the name of the Colin McRae Rally series to Dirt over time. I guess to kind of reboot and rebrand the series. Well, not rebrand, but reboot the series. Nose, please. Stop. Stop itching. And call him a cray dirt. They did it subtly, at least. So, like, you know, we had... You know, Toka, and then Toka Race Driver, and then Race Driver Grid, and now just Grid. And then Colin McRae Rally, Colin McRae Dirt, and now just Dirt. Like, they did it in a way where it's like, hey, this is part of the same series of games, it's just we're kind of rebooting it a little bit. As much as you can reboot a racing franchise. Oh, well, circuit racing franchise, I guess. No! Damn it! Why? Every time. We got seven laps to go still. At least with dirt it makes sense as McCray is no longer with us. Oh, they changed it to dirt before he died though. That's the thing. Like, Colin died during the uh, development of Dirt 2, and by then. At least here in, you know, North America, it was, the first Dirt game was just called Dirt. It wasn't called Colin McRae Dirt. So, I don't know. Again, Codemasters is weird about naming games. And changing the names in your, hello. Changing names in different regions. I guess to try to, I would say to try to sell copies, but it's, uh, except for like the Race Driver series, it doesn't make sense at all. It really doesn't. Have yeah, Ubisoft who continue to use Tom Clancy's name? Yeah. Oh, hi. Lapping my teammate for a second time. Excuse me. I have a feeling like this is maybe a poor car choice, considering my teammate is in last. Oh well, I, I'll, I'll try to persevere with Peugeot. I kind of looked up a, a thing on this of this game on Game Facts, and it's like, yeah, this car is balanced. You know, you're not gonna spin it much. Uh huh. You don't say. Oh god. And that is one that is one thing you definitely do not want to do in this game. At a high speed is jerk the steering like that cuz 10 times out of 10 you will spin. So yeah, that is definitely one thing you do not want to do here. Again, that's why I'm using analog steering to try to make it steering more give give more subtle steering, even though I'm really bad at subtle analog steering. I usually just go full walk anyways. Cause I'm smart. Two thousand IQ driving strats.
Oh, jeez. I keep breaking too late for this hairpin, going just super wide. Alright, five laps to go in our first race. Hey. Yeah, these races are a little bit lengthy. <laughs> Obviously. But that's fine with me. You guys should be used to me doing long races by now. I mean, at least it's not NASCAR long, where, you know, each race is three hours long, but still. You know. Oh, jeez. Honda and hello Vauxhall. Oh yeah, I see the Vauxhall logo now in the back of the car. I recognize it now. Wow. Can't believe I didn't actually notice the Vauxhall logo the first time I lapped that guy. Go me. Also, in case you haven't didn't notice from the qualifying results, yeah, all the real drivers from each team is in this game. So, woo! What do I think about the Mustang being Ford's car in the Cup Series? I mean. I like the Mustang, and they don't really have any other car that could that remotely resembles a NASCAR, so. You know? Oh, shit. Welp. Crap. Even trying to stay off the throttle and shit in the old hairpin, I still just fuck it up. I think I'm just carrying too much speed. I think that might be one of the, like, reasons why I'm just spinning the car. Because I'm carrying too much speed and therefore have to steer hard and therefore just pfft, around we go. So I might actually slow down for the old hairpin. That might help a little bit. You know. I got around that hairpin at a, with a relatively good line that time. I like how all of my windows are cracked, except maybe the front one screen I can't actually see. Is it? It is not. Unless that doesn't show up in the in-car view, in which case it still could be. I have around a couple more. I, I, not really back markers, probably, considering how, how fast I'm going compared to them, I don't know. There we go. Nice and smooth. Guess what? We get to do a whole nother 18 laps. Woo! After this race. Oh shit! Go me. That is a big open area to the right. I mean, don't really need the walls there, I guess, but I don't know. Slam on the brakes into the chicane. Try to get around this, whatever this is. 
and fail to do so. At least the AI are like... The AI actually aren't that bad in this game. Like, they can make mistakes and they're aware of your existence. Which is nice. Again, this game seemed to be quite ahead of its time. With, you know, good AI and car cameras, mappable, freely mappable controls. Like, damn. Cody's weren't fucking around when they made this. There's two laps to go. Here in Donington Race 1. Hello, Mazda. Oh my man, just a little cheeky corner cut. Probably didn't actually give me any sort of an advantage. Um, so I just kind of stopped steering the car there. I don't know why I did. I just did. Like, I went to adjust my steering input and I just stopped steering the car. <laughs> Gotta go around the Audi yet again. go in our first race. Oh boy. It's the final lap. Aren't you guys excited for the final lap? couple more cars. It's like a, one of the Fords, I think. Can't tell. They're way too far away. I can only see like a few pixels of their cars. What the hell? What the hell? That works, I guess. It doesn't. But that sure happened. Quiet. Why is everything I've been recording today so damn quiet? Burnout, now this. Like, fuck. There we go. Approaching the final turn. By the way, here's the pit entrance. This is why you get such an advantage in pit entry. In terms of time. Burnout, not me. And there we go. Well, we won the race. We may have a budding star on our hands as the new Peugeot driver scores his first touring car win. Here's a rundown of the final placing. Thank you, Tiff, for the results. Anyways, we get some race highlights in the background, aka just me spinning a lot. So here's a race time. That was a half hour long race. Damn. But ended up winning and beat Alan Menu by a minute two. Very good. Jason Plato in third, unsurprisingly, because of the Renaults, and then I waited too long. All right. There's the rest of the results. Doesn't go by lap, just goes by overall time. With Paul Radisich in the second Ford actually taking last, so hooray. And that is that. So, with race one out of the way. Well, the second qualifying session is about to start, so let's take a look. Yeah, we get thrown straight into the qualifying session for race number two, 
which I'm going to split each race into its own segment. So this is where I'm going to end the first segment. So uh, yeah, with that, stay tuned for our second race here at Donington and stuff. Yay!